Hi guys, it's Rachel. Today I'm here at Simon Fraser University. It's currently 6 degrees outside and I'm just looking for a place to film. And I also just want to show you guys the campus life that you can find here at SFU because it is a really, really nice school. Like, just look at my background. Wow. Look at how huge this place is. By the way, guys, I'm drinking Tim Hortons. The steep tea double double. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, try this out. I especially love this like walkway. Feels like, kind of feels like I'm floating on water. Obviously not, but kind of just gives that majestic effect. I think I found my spot where to film and I'll show you why. Dun, da, da, da. Wow. wow! Look at this view. The water is like mirroring the sky and I just love this whole feel. Time to set up. Yet again, see what's going on in this bag. I got my trusty old tripod which I got from Amazon. I got my camera, which is in this small little pouch. I'll show you guys what's inside. I got the um, the Sony ZV-1. Holy on this job This camera is said to be like the perfect camera for content creators. And guys, like this camera has been so amazing especially when i'm doing like product reviews or if i just want a bit of the background blurred so that whenever i'm talking people can focus on my face i especially like this big uh, button for recording videos and also this light that turns on red whenever i'm recording a video this is not the rode mic it's just a, a regular mic that i bought off of amazon but quality wise it's been serving me well I've also got this like um, horseshoe. Is it horseshoe? <laughs> Shoe horse? I don't know. There we go. My trusty iPad. Nice. Yeah, so I usually, uh, before filming, I review my script to make sure that I understand the flow of what I'm talking about. That way, the message comes across better to my viewers. So, there. I have this with me, super portable. I bring this everywhere with me. I use this to write my script and to also edit my videos. So I definitely got my money's worth by investing in this product. And I get to watch Netflix videos on this too. But yeah, this is like my whole vlog gear. Hi guys, it's Rachel and I'm back at it again with another case study video. You know, I realized that I've been talking a lot about study permit case refusals. So I decided to spice things up by now talking about a postgraduate work permit case refusal. Yeah, it apparently exists. You know, oftentimes people think that once they make it to Canada, everything will work out seamlessly. But that's not always the case and well, this case study will show you why. Every application process when it comes to immigrating to Canada must be handled with care. Each step requires a lot of detail and attention. And you have to understand, whenever you make an application to come to Canada, you have to be prompt, complete, and accurate before submitting an application package to IRCC. Anyway, I digress. So let's see what happened as to why the applicant's postgrad work permit got refused. Here are the facts about the applicant. The applicant was in Canada on a study permit that was valid until November 30th, 2018. But she completed her studies on December 4th, 2018, which was well past the expiration date of her study permit. So in short, she completed her studies after her study permit expired. After her study permit expired, she did not have a valid status in Canada. And that's the main problem. She remained in Canada without a valid status. Her plan was to basically stay in Canada as a visitor before submitting her postgrad work permit application. On February 16, 2019, she changed her status from student to a visitor. 
In her application, she included a letter explaining that she is entitled to a 90-day grace period to apply for a restoration of status. And sure enough, her application was submitted 78 days after her status expired. Sadly, the applicant got her visitor application refused and the immigration officer that reviewed her file gave the following reasons. First, she stayed in Canada two months after her study permit expired, when secondly, this was sufficient time for her to submit a post-grad work permit application. Unfortunately, she did not work on it right away when she could. And so for all of these reasons, the immigration officer refused her visitor application. So the next step that the applicant did was to appeal the immigration officer's decision to the federal court. Now, the judge looked at several things about her case. First was the evidence, very important, and the evidence included her application, the GCMS notes, and the letter for refusal. By the way guys, GCMS notes contains the officer's notes or comments about an applicant's application. They're very helpful, especially if you want to know the specific reasons as to why you got your application refused. Secondly, the judge also looked at the law, specifically Section 182 of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Regulations. So, in terms of evidence, this is what the judge said. The judge noticed that she did submit a request for a visitor status, but she failed to include her proof of funds, which basically implies that she had no funds to support her stay here in Canada as a visitor. Oh wait, she did actually have proof of funds, but it was a letter written by her brother back in 2017, which was basically two years ago, when she applied to Canada as a student. So according to the judge, this letter is outdated and it no longer applies to her because she is not a student. The judge also noted that she did not meet the conditions of her study permit as she was no longer a student here in Canada. And so she was staying in Canada without status. Oddly enough, she also stated that her purpose to remain in Canada was to apply for a post-grad work permit when none was submitted. Huh? Now, looking at the law, the judge mentioned the following. According to section 182 sub 1, which is about the restoration of status, if a foreigner is here in Canada on a temporary status, whether student, visitor, or worker, and that status expired, then they do have 90 days to apply to restore their original status. Next, section 182 sub 2 also talks about refusing a restoration application of a student that is no longer in compliance with their study permit conditions. And this was exactly the case for the applicant in this story. She cannot restore her status as a student as she is no longer enrolled in any designated learning institution and she is not actively pursuing a course or a program as well. So the immigration officer was correct in applying the law. And so in terms of evidence and in terms of the law, the judge agreed with the immigration officer and unfortunately refused her application. <sighs> you know, it's quite unfortunate what happened to her. She was basically a couple days late in completing her program because she completed her program after her study permit expired. But if she actually finished her program on time, she could have applied for a post-grad work permit and she could have been working full-time while waiting for a decision on her application. It's so unfortunate because it cost her her chances of remaining in Canada. So, what can we take away or what can we learn from her mistakes? Number one, don't push things to the last minute. Immigration is kind of like going to the doctor. We typically go see a doctor when things get really bad. But unlike medicine, immigration has no magical pill and it does not cure itself naturally. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that immigration law is strictly applied. If you miss a day or you send out the wrong form, your application can be refused and this can potentially ruin everything that you worked so hard for. Don't cram, don't procrastinate. It's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to be prompt than to worry. Second, when it comes to immigration, this should be your first priority. Have a plan. Don't be like me that kind of just pieced the puzzle along the way as you will have a difficult time in maneuvering the complicated immigration process. Take note you guys, some programs and policies do change. So you have to be well prepared for that. 
Also, I cannot stress this enough, have a roadmap. For example, you initially apply to come to Canada as a student. After graduation, apply for a post-grad work permit. And during that time, work in a skilled job for at least one year. That way, you can build up your points for the Express Entry Program, which can help you get an invitation to apply for permanent residence later on. Whatever it is or whatever pathway you choose, make sure you know where you are in your plan. And it's also good to have a backup plan just in case things don't go your way. Third, have a timeline. Schedule important dates like the expiry of your passport or the expiry of your status. Keep note of important events such as when to apply to renew, restore, or change your status. Also, gather all the necessary documents that you will need before creating an application. Based on my experience, I find that collecting documents is actually the most taxing part of the process and it really takes a lot of time, so be prepared for that. Fourth, commit, especially when you're already here in Canada. Don't delay in completing or finishing your program. Submit your projects on time. And more importantly, meet your deadlines. Otherwise, you'll be shooting yourself in the foot if you push everything back when you already know that your study permit has a set expiry date. Fifth, and just a heads up, while there is a new policy on the post-grad work permit that gives you an allowance of 180 days to apply for one, make sure to apply for a post-grad work permit well before those 180 days and second and more importantly, have a valid study permit status when you do. Generally, it is better to apply for a post-grad work permit before your study permit expires. I did that myself and the good thing about that is after you submit a post-grad work permit application, you are allowed to work full-time while waiting for a decision on your application. Fortunately for me, I had a job that was waiting for me to transition from part-time to full-time work and it was also a skilled job and because I submitted my post-grad work permit application right away, I was able to work full-time and I was able to build my points that helped me qualify for permanent residence later on. Last scene number six, if you're uncertain on what to do, go talk to an immigration lawyer about your application or your situation. For example, in this case study, the applicant basically closed her eyes and waited for things to get really difficult before consulting an immigration lawyer. But by the time she went to consult an immigration lawyer, it was far too late. And I know what some of you may be thinking, like, uh, Rachel, an immigration lawyer, it's quite intimidating and it's actually quite expensive to see one when I have a very small problem. But the applicant in our story also had a very minute problem, at least in her eyes, and well, look what it cost her. Yes, it's true. It may cost you money to see an immigration lawyer, but to me, it's always better to know what your legal options are than to not know. And well, in my opinion, the cost to see an immigration lawyer is minimal and worth it, especially when you have so much riding on the line. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. You know, I really take the time to read, to understand, and to peruse the complicated case studies found on the Camly website. And it's not for my benefit, it's for you guys. I want you guys to make informed decisions on your application. That way you don't have a hard time before coming to Canada and while you're in Canada. So if you do find this video helpful in your journey to come here, it would really mean a lot to me if you could please like and subscribe to my channel and also comment down below. Follow me on my socials as well. I also have a TikTok account, which is basically a condensed version of the tips and information that you can find on my YouTube channel. Again, thank you so much for your time. Keep safe. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.